Uh, and I think I'm going to play this because it's a really beautiful moment. Um, I came to see a race today. I see someone win. Happened to be me. But I want you to do more than just watch your race. I want you to take part in it. I want to compare faith to running in a race. It's hard. It requires concentration of will, energy of soul. You experience elation when the winner breaks the tape. Especially you got a bet on it. <laughs> but how long does that last? You go home. Maybe a dinner's burnt. Maybe, maybe I've got a job. So who am I to say believe, have faith in the face of life's realities? I would like to give you something more permanent, but I can only point the way. I have no formula for winning the race. Everyone runs in her own way, or his own way. And where does the power come from? To see the race to its end. From within. Jesus said, Behold, the kingdom of God is within you. If with all your hearts you truly seek me, you shall ever surely find me. If you commit yourself to the love of Christ, then that is how you run a straight race. Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming. Yeah, well, so I think what's really interesting, right, and, and he compares faith to racing, and obviously, and it's, that's not the interesting part. This is the interesting part. Um, <laughs> the, the, sorry. the power comes from within, right? Faith comes from within. And racing like you said, takes energy of the soul, fierce power, fierce focus. The one thing it doesn't really require, as somebody who's run before, is thinking, thought, analysis, right? In the heat of the race, you're not really doing any thinking. You're not really making any decisions. You're just sort of trusting your preparation, your legs, and in terms of faith, your heart, right? So what this reminds me of, literally, I kid you not, on my way here, I got, I left my house and I walked here. I walked outside and it smelled like rain. <laughs> <laughs> Is that amusing? Okay. <laughs> now go ahead. And I look up and it's cloudy. And, but not raining. Um, and I thought of, I think, what is it? Matthew 5? When in right after the Beatitudes, when Jesus says, you know, if the sky looks red and overcast, like it gonna rain. Like it's like you don't have to, you know, necessarily be a weatherman or or look at the weather report. Like if you feel like it's gonna rain, it's probably gonna rain. Mm -hmm. And then three seconds later, as I'm walking down my street, it starts raining. So what this reminds me of is it's the preparation in running, for example, that really makes or breaks your career, right? It's, you know, while in, in the 10 or 11 seconds or nine seconds that you're running a hundred meter dash, let's say, right? What really makes or breaks your time is your eating regimen leading up to the race, right? How much you slept, how stressed or unstressed you are. It's all of the preparation. Which is similar when you, when you think of faith or God's will, right? If I'm going to sort of execute God's will correctly or appropriately, that doesn't always mean making the right decision in the moment. It means preparing yourself in the best way, being in tune with the word of God, the word of Jesus, um, and then letting your heart sort of carry you through those moments, the moments of truth which is a parallel to, let's say, a race, 
um, without having to really think about it. That Those are the, the people who are really in tune with God's will because we're never going to know all the right answers, right? But what we can do is prepare ourselves for those moments. And then in the moments, it's not a matter of selecting the right choice. It's feeling it from within, um, just like you do in a race. Mm. What, what do you make of this line? Um, I mean, I, I love the, the, the part when he says, you know, because I think this is a very human kind of thing that he says when he says, you know, in the race you experience elation when somebody crosses the line, especially if it's the person, you know, you've bet on. Yeah. But um, who am I to say, you know, something like, to have faith in the face of life's realities. Maybe you come home when your dinner's burnt. Maybe you don't have a job. Maybe there's all these things that you have to worry about. Yeah. You know, um, the race and, and the winning the race is not permanent, right? Yeah. He says, I want to give you something permanent. Right. Um, and I thought that, that is actually a very, I think, true realization for a lot of people where it's like, You get so excited about this one thing and you put all your eggs into one basket or, or you're looking forward to some joy. And then when it's done, you kind of have to come back to your everyday life and, and life's realities. Yeah. So he's saying, I'm going to try to give you guys something permanent or I want to give you guys something permanent. Right. Um. And finding peace in God and Jesus rather than your success on earth, right? Right. And then he says, he makes this, this obviously this comparison. He says, I have no formula for winning the race. Everyone runs in their own way. Um, now, I think clearly that's supposed to be in a comparison to how to find the Lord, how to have faith. There's, yeah. there's no, he can't give you any formula for us. Right. But in the same way that how do you, how do you find the power, where does the power come to finish the race, to carry on? Where does the drive come to, to be faithful, to seek the Lord? It comes from within. It's an energy that you have to, to find from within yourself, this drive, mm -hmm. um, this persistence. Um, and I think, you know, this obviously dovetails really nice with the next race he ru runs where he runs the quarter mile, yeah. he falls uh, um, in the race, yeah. get back, so yeah, get yeah, back yeah. sorry, gets back up, comes around and actually ends up winning. Yeah. Um, Which is absurd, by the way. I don't know if that happened in real life. Of 
was not the prettiest quarter I've ever seen, Mr. Little. Certainly the bravest. That was quite a comeback. I don't know how much they they fudged that for the movie, but this is a true story. I don't know if that yeah. in particular happened, but that was uh that was quite the feat. It was. Um but I mean it's it's this line is behold the kingdom of God is within you. If with all your heart you truly seek me, then you sh should ever surely find me. If you commit yourself to the love of Christ, then that is how you run a straight race. Yeah. So and straight race, I think what he's saying, pardon my interruption, is to find the peace, to find the will, to find the love, not necessarily to win, right? Because like you said, and like he says at the beginning, I love when he says, what was it? Um, it you came here to see somebody win a race. It happened to be me, right? Mm -hmm. And I've heard like Patrick Mahomes talk about this, Russell Wilson talk about this, that they pray before games saying things to God and Jesus like, it's not really whether I win or lose today. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for my health, such and such, right? And the straight race, I think, you hear that on the surface as winning, like running quickly, fast. But I think, correct me if, if you think I'm wrong, that he's saying running the straight race means running your best race. And whether or not that's good enough to win, that's not what God and Jesus are concerned with. Pardon my interruption. No, no, no. I, also, I was going to say also, I think... It, it comes back to this idea of um, I can't, I have no formula for winning. Uh, everybody runs their own race. Um, how do you get to the, the finish line? Um, I think the idea is that you're, like you said, everybody runs their own race. Every finish line is different for each person, mm, right? Yeah. And every time is different from each person. But the idea is, how do you get to that point in a straight line? How do you keep on that path? Mm -hmm. um, and again, it, it, I'm gonna come back to this. Everybody's path is different. Everybody's line is different. Um, everybody's race is different. But how do you stay on that path? It's by seeking Christ with all your heart. Um, and I think that is is the message that he's little is trying to give in this moment is we can all talk about these this individual race and the joy that we experience from this individual race, but that's not you know the the permanent race, and that's not even your race. That's not even everybody's race. There's mm -hmm. that's not the finish line. Right. We all have different races that we're running. And if you want to reach that end, you want to run to get there. He's saying, I can't tell you what the road is to get to that finish line, get to that point, as you were saying, of peace. But I can tell you how to go about running in the straight line to get there. Yeah, And that yeah, is by exactly. right. following... Uh, Christ and this Christ. this line the king behold the kingdom of God is within you. Yeah, and like you said, running in a straight line, not wavering, right? Physically and spiritually. When you're running a race, right? One of the biggest most important elements of training is running directly straight towards point A to point B towards your target, right? Not veering off to the side which is going to help you run faster and then spiritually, right? It's like pursuing whether or not right again, no thinking whether or not you're necessarily making the right choices, pursuing Jesus, pursuing God right. and their will and their glory 100%, not what? wavering, doubting yourself. Is this the right path? Right. Just choosing one and pursuing it as hard as you can and they'll lead you on the right path. And I think too, as we'll, as the, the race kind of shows where he falls and get back up, gets back up, it's like that straight line, it's not about uh, never going off that straight line because as, as you see he falls and gets back up mm -hmm, it's about true. how do you stay um, stay steadfast to not fall off the line right you can mm. fall I mean 
there's falling off or going off for a little bit, but then how do you find the strength to continue going down that straight line, continuing to pursue that path that yeah. you have? Right. Um, and so I think it's it's not so much that you can never go off the path or, or get knocked down, but it's continuing. How do you continue to pursue that line and find the strength to continue to run along that straight line. Yeah, that's a really good point. And what's really interesting about that, what you just said, right? When he falls and gets back up, now he has to work even harder to reach the finish line on time, right? If you fall down, if you stumble, getting up and then exerting the same amount, right? The same thing you did before, that's not going to be good enough anymore. If you fall down, you have to fight even harder to overcome that, to get back up. And then your next step forward has to be your best. It has to be, you have to find that extra gear to be even better than before. You're not going to catch up, metaphorically speaking, in a race. And then obviously, faith isn't necessarily a competition, you against others, but the competition with yourself. If you fall down and you get up and you keep doing the same thing, that might not be good enough. Right. So obviously, coming back to the, the story where right, we have... Little is set up as this character who's clearly just resolute in his faith, is strong in it, and that propels him to victory, that propels him to strength, that propels him to run fast. Um, and you see this, he he does this incredible quarter mile. <laughs>